Good afternoon. It's Jeremy. It's Sunday, November the 13th. And today what I'd like to look at is OFDM. Uh, we previously looked at OFDM in uh, this post here. And in that post, what I did is I made a simple model in Psychos and I simulated an eight channel system data rate of 9600 bits per second with eight channels and I built it with, uh, in a discrete way. So what I'd like to do in this post is I want to use the uh, IDFT or the inverse direct uh, discrete Fourier transform uh, or the inverse fast Fourier transform is, is the um, more efficient way of doing it. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to build a 64 channel model and use the IFFT. So basically, here's the uh, parameters we'll be dealing with. The, the idea for this is to use the single sideband, uh, upper sideband, and a transceiver uh, to send this. So basically, if you want to avoid multipath, which is one of the reasons people use OFDM, then you should be working between, let's say, 53.3 um, milliseconds and, let's say, 6.7 milliseconds. So if I pick, let's say, for instance, um, my bandwidth is from 300 to 2700 hertz. Let's say I want a composite bit rate of 9600 bits per second with 64 channels. Then I'm going to have 150 bits per second per channel. If I'm using 16 QAM, that's four bits. So that means the baud rate is going to be 37.5 bauds or uh, a baud time of 26.7 milliseconds. So here's the idea. Uh, your data is coming in here, 9600. You split that up into 64 channels, each one at 150 um, uh, bits per second. Then uh, with QAM, that reduces to um, 37.5 baud. Okay, and you take your I and your Q symbols, uh, and you go into an inverse fast Fourier transform, and then you go um, you go back to serial. And then you go it on your channel. That's basically the way it's done. And then the reverse process on the receiver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to create my data in Psychos Lab, which we'll see in a second. So I'm going to use the random function to create a matrix of 64 by 40. So there'll be 40 columns. That'll give me enough data. And each column uh, is 64 entries, 64 rows. And that represents my 64 channels. Okay. And then... Um, I'm going to generate the random matrix for QAM. So the I can have a value of minus 3, minus 1, 1, or 3. And then the same thing for the Q. There's four possibilities for I, four possibilities for Q. So 4 by 4 is 16. And so that's my capital X vector uh, from 1 to 64. And that goes into the IFFT. And that gives you 64 samples. And they're shifted out serially. So those are my the real values of the IFFT. Those are the imaginary values. Here's my modulator. I'm going to take my XN real and my XN imaginary, multiply them up. Now, for clarity, I'm going to use um, 10 kilohertz. But practically, if you want to put this in the middle of the USB band, this will be 1500, which is in the middle of 300 to 2700. That's my transmitter. And then on my receiver, uh, I'm also saving it to uh, the workspace here. So then on my receiver, there's the workspace, which is the output of the transmitter. So on the receiver, I'm going to reinsert the carriers. Now, when you uh, multiply the uh, cosine by a cosine, you get a DC value and the double frequency. The cosine times the sine gives you uh, zero and the double frequency. So before we sample and hold to get back our original XN, uh, we do a low pass filter to get rid of the double frequency. And here's a snapshot of, there's my I and my Q samples for X and N, small x, uh, X, N. And those are the recovered ones, which are basically exactly the same. So let's quickly look at the Psychos, um, Psychos Lab um, program to generate the data. So I'm using my random function here. Uh, the baud rate 37.5. I'm going to have 40 columns of data. That'll give me enough random data. The random generates a number from 0 to 1. So for QAM, we're going to have four values, minus 3, minus 1, 1, and 0. So let's say we say anything that lies between 0 and 0 0.25 will be minus 3. Anything from 0.25 to 0.5, we're going to call um, minus 1, etc. So that's how we get the minus 3 and minus 1. And then I'm going to do that for I, and I'm going to do it for Q. 
Okay, and then I'm going to feed in um, a column vector of 64 values. Uh, the first, like, I'm going to feed in the first column to get my small xm, which is the IDFT or the IFFT. And then, um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that for real and imaginary, and then I'm going to create the xn as a complex number. And then what I'm going to do is for the sample, for an xn sample, real sample, it's an impulse. So really what I want is I want that sample to hold its value for the whole sample time. So basically I'm going to oversample 10 times and that'll give me a, a rectangular pulse as opposed to an impulse. So that's basically my D to A converter. And then I'm going to shift that out into the channel. I'm going to create two structures which contains all the columns uh, of the XN. Okay, and then I'm going to um, transmit it. So on this first, so let's uh, load the data. So there's my XN. I'm just going to say no because I don't want to see it all. Okay, so that's my imaginary uh, IDFT and that's my real IDFT. It takes a while to calculate all this. Okay, so that's done. So load Monum, load Psychos. Let's open the transmitter. Okay, there's my transmitter. Now I'm I'm generating a carrier here at 10k, not 1.5k, just to make it more visible. So we can see there's our our band pass there. Around uh, 10k. Let's look at the data now. So I'm just going to look at the first couple of. Uh, Samples there. Okay, so that's my transmit data. Now let's look at the receiver. So I'm going to open the receiver. Here's my receiver. And so I'm going to read in the output of the transmitter. Okay, so let's compare the received uh, samples to the transmit samples. Okay, so I'm going to uh, expand that here. Okay, so that's the I transmit, that's the I receive, and that's, sorry, that's the I transmit. And that's the I receive, and that's the Q transmit, and that's the Q, uh, Q receive. So you can see that they're basically the same. And um, this vibration here is the um, double frequency. It's not 100% filtered out. So I didn't really uh, spend a lot of time working on the transmit and receive filters. I just want to uh, get a result and see what it looked like. So that's basically the... Um, OFDM64 channel using the IFFT.